Hey, what's going on, everyone? This is Mitch. Hope you're enjoying your Sunday. Hope you're enjoying your weekend. Chances are you're seeing wintry weather right now, or you've been seeing it throughout the last uh, 12 to 18 hours. It's snowing in places like Nashville, Knoxville, Chattanooga, I believe, Atlanta. Uh, and, you know, I just saw a report of thunder sleet, thunder snow. I just saw someone out of Cleveland, Tennessee, uh, they posted a video on Twitter, and it looked like it was snowing the size flakes the size of pancakes. So the dynamic part of the system is wrapping through as of uh, 2.19 p.m. And uh, it's very dynamic. And I, I told you guys, you know, it could absolutely unload snow in certain isolated areas. You can get a lot of snow very quickly. So that's kind of what's happening in certain areas right now. Um, but the beef of this video is going to be about the big time potential for another winter winter storm for areas of the East Coast. And I'm talking specifically on the Southeast and the Mid-Atlantic. This has potential, some of the biggest potential I've, I've seen in years, not years as in decades, but several years uh, this far out that I've seen in a while. So there's a lot to talk about. Um, I don't want this intro to drag on because I know some of y'all frown upon that, but uh, I want to mention really quick, when you look at your weather apps this week, chances are, for example, I live in Lexington, South Carolina. It's pretty much right near Columbia. If I look at my weather app right now for Thursday night into Friday and into Saturday, it basically says one to three inches of snow. So your average person who doesn't you know, know an average amount about weather is going to look at that and get tunnel vision on it and basically tell everybody and their brother that, hey, it's going to snow uh, Friday, Saturday. In fact, the rumors have already started across the southeast. So it doesn't matter if you're in Columbia, South Carolina, or anywhere in the southeast. Do not get so tunnel visioned on your weather app and just see it and 100% believe that it's going to happen. There's so much more that can happen. That's how you That's how you get upset. That's how you get your hopes up. And then you all, all of a sudden you're blaming the meteorologist and weatherman on TV because they got it wrong when really what you did was you looked at your weather app probably and you believed it was going to happen and didn't really look any deeper into it. So I'll get off my soapbox on that. I just want to mention that to you guys. And it's really just, I'm just trying to give you all some advice because a lot of people do it. I did it once upon a time. Um, so want to mention that. So if you guys have not subscribed, hit the subscribe button for me. Like the video if you like it. Follow me on Twitter. It's going to be a great place to follow me throughout the week. Um, I had incredible growth on there. Y'all definitely responded with that. And, you know, I, I try to respond back with y'all. We're keeping y'all updated. Hit me up on Facebook. I stay active on that too. Thank you. Thank you for the incredible uh, last seven to 10 days, guys. I picked up over 5,000 subscribers. Thank you for blessing me. I mean, that's all I can say. If you guys got anything I can pray about, please put it in the comments below. It gives me an opportunity to pray over your prayer requests, and then it gives others an opportunity to do so too. So we're going to talk about you guys in the Northeast real quick and finish off the rest of the storm as we finish it up within the next 24 hours. If you want to skip ahead and just hear about the storm threat for this weekend, I don't blame you. Um, but I definitely don't want to leave my folks hanging in the Northeast. I've had a couple people get upset about that. And I don't blame you. You want to hear about your area. So right now, the snow shield is basically just past Washington, D.C. Look at the latest long-range HRRR model. We'll keep this rolling as we're getting into later into the afternoon hours. The shield of snow will overspread over Pennsylvania. Um, there will be, will be a dry slot issue for someone in West Virginia. Someone in West Virginia is not going to get as much snow as they were originally forecasted. But check out the snow shield breaking over um, Ohio, there is going to be a sharp cutoff in Ohio and Kentucky. Someone's going to get disappointed. But overall, in general, this is trending more west. So maybe areas that didn't think they were going to get any snow might get a couple inches before it pulls off away. Uh, Pittsburgh's going to be, get a big old thumping of snow. I know I keep using that word. Um, thumping means a heavy burst of snow for several hours. That's what I'm meaning when I say that. And this will last through the evening. Then y'all might get dry slotted. That doesn't mean y'all are going to get any less than y'all forecast, but that means you better get all your snow early on and you know because there's potential that it only might be just a few hour period of heavy snow but we'll see i might be totally wrong um but this moves through if you live in the delmarva area the northern area northern area of maryland uh you're going to get a couple hour period of some snow before it switches to rain northern new jersey uh snow this continues to move through southern new england you're going to get a couple inches of snow before it switches to rain maybe boston maybe a quick inch and then you're going to get a wind-driven rain that goes over all the snow that did accumulate, if any at all. And then there's going to be an area, New Hampshire and Vermont. Some, some of the mountaintops could get a, a foot or two of snow. I really think this gets through Maine, heavy snow um, as we get into tomorrow, and then it switches to rain tomorrow evening. We look at snowfall totals for this area, and I think this is the best one to look at right here, the National Weather Service for this area. But this is going to be a big storm for Buffalo, maybe over a foot and a half of snow. Erie, 16 inches showing up for you guys. 
And, uh, yeah, there's going to be a lot of snow in the mountainous areas in the interior northeast. There really is. But that I-95 corridor, I think Washington, D.C. could get more snow than all the other big cities to its northeast. And it's just the position of this low pressure. For whatever reason, it wants to just plow into the northeast and then give you all a bunch of warm air at the coast. But the interior northeast is going to get a lot of snow. Pittsburgh is trying to show a foot of snow. Um, Boston, nothing really. Um, but we'll see how this unfolds. Y'all let me know what y'all see up there in the northeast. I know some of you don't think I talk about y'all as much. Um, but I, I do want to make sure I even out whoever, who all I'm talking about. So here we go. What this is, is this is the, I've showed this before. I've been showing it this past week. This is the Weather Prediction Center Winter Weather Outlook. So this basically shows a quarter inch of liquid equivalent of snow and sleet. So I know you're thinking you're ahead of qu a quarter inch ain't a lot, um, but it, it really can be depending on how cold the temperatures are, what your snowfall ratio is and things like that. So let's try to make this a little bit bigger for you guys. So right now, this is for day five. First off, I want to say 48 hours ago, they dropped a uh, 10 to 30 percent chance of wintry precipitation. That's, incra that's crazy. They dropped a day seven um, outlook for the mid-Atlantic and southeast. That's unreal. That's unheard of. I've never seen it. I can't think of one time, but this is a big deal. I know you're looking at this was like a blob of green. This doesn't mean anything to me. Well, it should because this is day five for North Carolina parts of Virginia showing a 10 to a 10 to 30 percent chance. This is basically showing of a, a signal that there could be a quarter inch of liquid equivalent to snow and sleet. That might be one to three inches of snow. It might be sleet. We go to Saturday and look at this. Let me uh, fix the opacity right here. Um, this is a 30 to 50 percent chance in the area of um, dark green. It gets into Columbia, Atlanta, Greenville, and then you've got this highlighted area of a 50 to 70 percent chance at day six. This is Saturday of um, a quarter inch of you know. I don't think I have to repeat that again. It says a quarter inch liquid equivalent of snow and sleet. So this is a big signal for a winter storm showing up this weekend. Now, there's some question marks. Some models are showing it to be on Friday-ish. Some are showing it more late Saturday into Sunday. There's two storm signals. A lot to discuss on that. Um, but this is a strong signal um, six or five to six days out for winter weather for the southeast. And this stretches all the way into the northeast also. And then, uh, really, it goes further into the northeast as you get into Sunday. But this is incredible. This is an incredible signal this far out. It really is. Um, I want to mention before we get into the meat of the video, when we talk about this storm system, it's going to get cold regardless if there's snow. This is temperature anomalies to GEFS, which I think is a respectable thing to look at. Obviously, the blues, the purples, the pinks, that's much below average. If you look at this graph, that's um, anywhere from 8 to 12 degrees below average. And that's pretty pretty darn cold in January, guys. It really is. So we get into about late week. We're getting a Thursday morning. Look at all this cold air working its way. This is an Arctic front. This is a pattern shifting cold front um, that really locks us into an Arctic air mass uh, for several days, regardless if it snows or not. So this moves through. And then by the time you get into Friday morning, this grips the entire eastern U.S. and parts of the central U.S. with well below average temperatures. At the same time, you have an active southern jet when you got moisture shooting up down here. This is January 21st, guys. This is the coldest part of the year climatology-wise. Um, so when you got below average temperatures, you got moisture coming out the uh, Gulf, and you got temperatures that's supposed to be below average. When you mash all that all together, you have the recipe of a deep south winter storm. I really do think you do. But you get into Friday, you know, you got these anomalies showing up of uh 15 degrees below average for highs, you know, it's an incredible signal. And this keeps going through the rest of the year, 25th, 26th, 27th, 28th. And it shows below average temperatures through the rest of the month, through the 31st. Look at the 6 to 10 day outlook uh, temperature wise from the National Low Service. It's showing a, I think that's what, a 70 to 80% chance of below average temperatures between the 21st um, and 25th. Um, this is going to happen. And then it shows a little bit above average precipitation on the southeast. That to me, that's telling us that, hey, there's going to be some gulf moisture around. And then this pattern will continue through the rest of the month, basically. It says 23rd to 29th. So we'll move past that and we'll look what everybody wants to look at here. But I thought that everything needs to be mentioned. Everything needs to be outlined. You need to understand what's pulling this all together. So let's look at this. 
So what we're going to look at here is we're going to look at the GFS, the Canadian model, and the European model. And we're going to look at the current model right now. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the same three models, but we're going to look at the previous runs of these models. And there's a reason I'm doing that. So it's going to set up for the final thing I'm going to say at the end of the video. So stick with me with this because I know y'all just want to know, is it going to snow or not? We, we don't know that, especially in the southeast, guys, and, and y'all know that. Y'all, I think we've all gotten a rug pulled out from under us enough where um, that it's not that easy to forecast. But here you go. You're getting into midweek. You're getting into Thursday, and here comes the piece of our energy right here that swings through. Well, watch this. This could potentially bring a rain to snow event for areas of the mid-south, lower Ohio Valley, but this swings through. Not a real big deal, but it could really set off a low pressure right down here. Now, this is the time frame that all your weather apps in the southeast are showing snow. But you notice the latest GFS doesn't show anything, right? For a Friday morning, Friday during the day, so you're thinking, well, why is my weather app showing that? <clears throat> well, that's because it loses the storm and then it picks up on another storm for later this weekend and then slams the southeast Saturday night into Sunday. Um, here, look at the snow breaking out overnight Saturday into Sunday this coming weekend then brings us an all-out winter storm into the Carolinas and uh, continues to move through and then moves off the coast and gets very close to being a big-time system for the Mid-Atlantic and Northeast. So that's the latest run on this system. Um, but that's not the run showing up probably on your weather apps right now. This is There's two areas of interest. There's one basically at the very end of the work week, and there's another at the latter, latter half of this coming weekend. And whichever piece of energy becomes the more dominant figure is going to be our storm threat. There's, is there a chance both of them could? I doubt it. Is there a chance we lose uh, both the storms? I, I doubt it, but there's still a chance for either one. So it shows that model. Now we look at the Canadian model. Okay, the Canadian model is different. We'll swing this through. Here comes our interest. And I know you're thinking Canadian model, that's not a very reliable model, but the Canadian model did pretty decent with this event going on right now. It really did. The Canadian model used to have an incredibly terrible cold bias, and it still kind of does. Um, but honestly, I haven't seen anything terrible by the Canadian model lately. I really haven't. It's been a good model. It's just a middle-of-the-pack model. But here you go. Look at this. Here comes that piece of energy. There's that rain to snow event across the Ohio Valley and then across the Mid-South as we're getting into Thursday morning. That moves through. Low pressure develops as this Arctic high pressure. That is a strong high pressure, a 1043 <laughs> Arctic high pressure moving through surging in arctic air from the northwest that sets up a, what we call an overrunning event it really this this would remind me of something of uh, uh late january 2014 that caused all that panic in atlanta and, and shut atlanta down over an inch or two of snow this moves through this would show the storm signal for the same time frame that all your weather apps are showing it for it would show it for uh, overnight thursday into friday morning into friday into an overnight friday into saturday this coming um, this breaks out sleet, freezing rain over Georgia and the Carolinas, and then turns into a major storm system for the Carolinas. And uh, brings freezing rain as far south as uh, the coastal areas of Georgia and the Carolinas. And eventually, um, just it's just a, a huge storm. I know you're wanting to see snowfall accumulations, guys, but there's no point in showing that because we're just not at a comfortable range to show that. But tomorrow we will start showing that. I promise you for that. Look at the European. The latest European run. As we're going through here, I'm going to get a little bit closer to. I know this is hard to see on the screen. We're getting to Thursday. Here's that system that is pretty much concrete been showing on all the modern runs. It's, going to, it's a little piece of energy, a flat piece of energy that moves through. It might be a rain to snow kind of event for Kentucky, Tennessee, maybe the Ohio Valley, like I mentioned. That gets on through. What happens here is it kind of trails off a piece of energy. Low pressure starts to develop. And then it starts to show wintry precipitation on the coastal areas of the Carolinas. We get a little bit closer to that, but we keep moving here. And uh, it doesn't show that second storm. It shows moisture in the Gulf with cold air nearby, but it never brings that moisture north. It really doesn't. So the, Euro, the current European technically doesn't show anything right now. It really doesn't. Um, but you get a little bit closer to look at the current European right now. You're getting into this weekend. Well, I'm sorry, you're getting into that time frame that we're watching for Friday. And look at this, I know it shows it's green, but this is a freezing rain and snow. This is snow for the Outer Banks. This is freezing rain and sleet, a little thin little pocket of moisture for you guys. 
and that's basically with the cold air nearby and a low pressure developing, but the low pressure never quite really gets going to overspread moisture and cause an overrunning event over this Arctic air. So there's a sign there that something's developing at the same time with the Canadian model, but it's not quite there. Now, what we're going to do now is, with the GFS, we're going to take a look what the GFS showed for the run this morning. And then for the Canadian model, we're going to take a look what, it sh what the Canadian model showed um, for, um, for overnight. And then the European, we're going to show the overnight run. So this is basically the run prior to each of these three models we're showing, if that makes any sense. Let me know if that confused you in the comments, and I'll try to explain it. Um, we're getting into the midweek, getting to late week. Here comes the um, here comes the GFS from 06Z, the one prior to the one I just showed you. Check it out. Pops the low pressure off here in the same time frame that all the weather apps are showing, and uh, shows moisture back building here. But it's a little too late for this to be a, a real significant system. But cold air is far enough in to the point where this becomes a snowstorm for the Carolina coastline, even areas of Georgia, and there's just a little bit of snow for areas of the Carolinas and North Georgia, but nothing really significant. But this would be a big time event for the Outer Banks. So that's what that run shows. And then it tries to pick up on that storm signal behind it that it's now fully picking up on. But on the previous GFS, it takes this storm signal and basically suppresses it down south and tries to bring it up again. Um, but the cold air brings snow all the way into south Georgia. In the panhandle of Florida with this low pressure, this is a deep push, push of Arctic air. I want to remind you guys, it's not like we're talking about a system 8 to 10 days away. This is a potential system 5 to 6 days away. And I feel like um, this is just going to come up really quick. I mean, we're about to get into the work week. Te technically, tomorrow is Martha Luther King Day. A lot of people don't work, but it technically is the start of the work week. And this system can, can hit this work week. So it's crazy to watch and see what happens here. But this system will ends up becoming a big, powerful system for the Northeast as we get into early next week. Look at the Canadian model, and uh, we're getting into the time frame. There's that first little system, and then the Canadian model still shows kind of what it showed on its on its uh, current run, which is a system Friday, um, well Thursday night into Friday into Friday night, and then for Saturday into Saturday uh, during the day, it a, shows a monster nor'eastern for areas of the uh, Northeast and Mid-Atlantic. But this will be a significant winter storm. I mean, the, the pinks of the freezing rain, purple was the sleet, and this would be a massive storm system. And 144 hours out, I mean, heck, in two days we'll be in short range model guidance for this storm. Now, this this is the crazy run, and the Europeans have been showing a crazy run with this too. And I'll be interested to see if it bites back on it later on uh, overnight. But as we're getting going here, um, we're getting into Friday morning. Look at this overrunning setting up here. Remember, this is the storm that the Europeans kind of lost in today's run. But overnight last night, it had a monster storm for the southeast. I'm talking about freezing rain all the way to Savannah, uh, southern Georgia, snow all the way into the uh, western panhandle of Florida. I mean, let's just go on and get a closer look at this, you know, for the southeast. You know, this this would be a textbook uh, one to remember system right here. And um, it, it basically for Columbia, for example, brings sleet. Then it switches it to heavy snow. All this purple is freezing rain. This would bring freezing rain almost as far south as Dagum, Jacksonville, Florida. And this would be a disru disruptive, uh, disruptive, I, obviously I can't talk. It'll be a bad ice storm, guys. I, I obviously can't speak right now. I'm, I'm mentally exhausted from the last week. Um. But this, I mean, this would be a massive storm system. And guess what time frame it is? It's for that, it's for that time frame your weather apps are showing. Um, but it kind of lost it on the pre on the run on the run that's going on right now. Um, but this moves through. Does it pick up on that second system? It shows a little bit of something right here, but but nothing too crazy. But it still shows winter precipitation early next week, next week, um, as far south as South Georgia. So it's pretty crazy. Um, as far as what that looks like uh, up south, you know, this would turn into a pretty monster storm for Virginia, Washington, D.C., New York City, and things like that. So what I want to show you is the temperatures right here. Check this out. And these are temperatures off the GEFS ensembles. Look at this cold air that moves through. This is high Thursday, locked into the 90s, into ten, the 90s, the 20s into the in Tennessee, Kentucky. Uh, you got high temperatures in the single digits in the upper Midwest. You get into Friday. This really takes a hold of the eastern U.S. in general. 
And you got highs below freezing showing up as far south as the uh, South Carolina. And uh, a bitterly cold air mass is going to move in regardless as we get into next week. And coldest air maybe in about three or four years regardless of what happens here. Um, so what's happening here is I'll look at the GFS, right? We get this piece of energy that's moving through now. And what happens with the latest GFS is basically this piece of energy is coming down. And then you get this southern stream piece of energy. And you got the northern stream piece of energy. What happens with the latest GFS is uh, the southwest, uh, the southern, basically this piece of energy down here in Baja, California, it gets lost. And it kind of gets knocked down and it doesn't get captured by the flow here. Therefore, you don't get any kind of system and you just kind of get some kind of a northern piece of energy that swings through and you don't get a system that pulls together. But with the weekend, with the late weekend storm, it's able to grab a piece of energy and swing in through it, swing, swing a piece of energy through. And then uh, I'm sorry, guys, my words are mixing up together. I'm very tired. I'm exhausted. So uh, let me wrap this video up. But the second system here. It picks up a piece of energy. It's really, really ready to become a negative tilted system and didn't really become a nasty storm system for areas of the eastern U.S. Now, we look at the Canadian, you can see it clear as day. Canadian, here comes the piece of energy right here. It picks up this piece of energy down here, and then they intertwine together, uh, go on and go out on a date with each other, and it uh, becomes a big-time system for the eastern U.S., um, so, you know, that's the difference. That's what's going on. I will mention with this storm system, you know, I feel like there's less players on the field, meaning I feel like this is a lot more cut and dry than the system that just moved through. I really do. Don't get me wrong. It's a hard forecast, but I really don't think it's as, uh, as uh, hard as this one that just moved through. So we look at the we look at the EPS ensembles. Now, one thing I wanted to mention here is ignore all this. This is from the system that's going on right now. So as I'm moving through here, I'm getting to the Thursday morning. Watch the colors kind of expand here. That's for our system into this weekend. Notice you have a mean of three inches in Florence, three inches in Columbia, um, a solid uh, two inches in Myrtle Beach, uh, one inch in Charleston. That is a solid storm signal. So therefore, the operational European did not show nothing, but the ensembles are picking up on something. And that, when you're... The ensembles is always very important to look at until you get in the short range. And right now, when you're in the four to six day range, five to seven day range, it is absolutely uh, the best thing to look at right now. It really is, guys. So um, if you look a little further north, kind of what the signal is. Remember, ignore all this. This is from the system right now. But we get into this weekend. Notice this kind of draws a little bit further southeast. And that's that's the system that trying to pull up on. So that's all I got, guys. Thank you all for tuning in. Appreciate y'all. It's going to be an active week. I'm going to probably double up my videos every single day unless we just kind of lose the storm signal. And there's a chance we might, but I'll probably be doubling up my videos. So I'll be giving y'all morning updates because this is coming up quick. I mean, this is this could potentially be a Thursday as early as a Thursday night storm system. Um, so uh, stay tuned. Thank y'all for the incredible support. And uh, y'all have a great and fun rest of your Sunday.